This little plane is about the size of a really big bird, with no room for a pilot, a human one anyway. It's an unmanned aerial vehicle, or UAV, made by a company called Arcturus. This particular UAV is loaded with small but sophisticated cameras and computers that turn it into a high-tech spy plane. It's handy for tracking down intruders and for keeping tabs on the health of the environment. I'm Sandra Chung, and I'm a science writer here at Idaho National Laboratory. I visited the hangar in the INL Robotics Building to find out more about the UAVs and how remote sensing specialists are using them to give other scientists a better than bird's eye view of the landscape. These three guys help get the UAVs and all their onboard equipment running smoothly. From the left... I'm Mark McCain, an advisory engineer, and I am the safety pilot for the UAV program. I'm Jody Boyce. I'm an engineer. I'm the UAV airframe and payload specialist. And this is Matthew Anderson. He and a few other researchers have used the UAVs to test all sorts of interesting and useful technologies. The unmanned air vehicles you hear about in the news, like the Predators, those are remotely piloted vehicles. So the difference between that and these is there is no pilot in the loop during most of the operation. That's the autopilot. So I guess it's about the size of one hot dog in a bun. Inside that computer is a flight path, which tells it where to go. We've flown payloads for a lot of different customers. Some of them are classified, some of them are not. Say, for example, a farmer wants to know how his crops are doing. We could fly an instrument over there and take a look at the health. And that's what some of the things that Ryan and, and Jessica know a lot about. He means this Ryan. Hi, my name's Ryan Hreska. I am a research scientist at the INL studying hyperspectral remote sensing. Remote sensing is basically collecting information about something from a distance. Ryan programs a computer on the UAV to collect information using a hyperspectral sensor. The PICA-2. It's yeah. a sensor that was produced by Resonon um, out of Bozeman, Montana. But mm -hmm. that kind of gets a little visual? That one light. actually collects all of the visible light plus the near-infrared. Visible light is all the wavelengths we can see, the Roy G. Biv part of the spectrum. Infrared light is invisible, unless we're wearing night vision goggles or using special cameras, like the PICA-2. You can think of a regular camera. You get a red, green, and blue channel, and it looks kind of how we would see light. If you can think of the three image planes on a regular camera, on this one here, when we fly it, we actually take 80 image planes. Which makes for a pretty amazing picture. But some scientists find the information much more useful in the form of a graph. On the x-axis, we have wavelength in nanometers. Okay. And on the y-axis? What we're seeing there is percent reflectance, which is actually a measure of how much energy is being reflected by, in this case, a plant. Okay, so this is all the light that's coming off the leaf. That is correct. And mm -hmm. my understanding is that what kind of light or how much light you have at different wavelengths tells you a little bit about what's inside? Uh, that is correct. Inside the leaf we have chlorophyll. It absorbs in the blue light and in the red light. And then we have what's called the green peak, which makes the leaf appear green because the other uh, wavelengths are being absorbed. So, so if you've got healthy plants, you're going to see more green light reflected as opposed to dying plants? or Typically, yes. Mm -hmm. So moving on to the right side of the graph, what kind of information do you get there? And that's the shortwave infrared, controlled mainly by leaf water content. Um, if you have a healthier plant, it has more water inside the leaf, and you'd have less energy being reflected because it's being absorbed by the plant. The plant starts to die, it loses that leaf water content, and you'd see an increased response in this area. So I understand Jessica Mitchell is looking at a couple of different things on these graphs that will tell her about nitrogen content in sagebrush. You should probably talk to Jessica about that. Great, I think I will. All right. There's a lot of different grass species here. Jessica is a graduate student at Idaho State University. She's trying to figure out whether she can use the hyperspectral sensor on the UAV to study the health of sagebrush at the INL site in the eastern Idaho desert. Looking at nitrogen in sagebrush is a way of determining the nutritional status of vegetation. The more nitrogen you have, the bigger you tend to have patches of larger sagebrush, which um, is better habitat quality in terms of cover as well. So you're In this dry, sparse forest. landscape, lots of rare animals depend on sagebrush for food and cover. Healthy sagebrush means good eats for them, and knowing where they're going to eat and hang out makes it easier to protect their habitat. 
Jessica could get this information by hiking through the sagebrush herself, but there's almost 900 square miles of sagebrush on the INL site. So she, Ryan, and Matt worked together to put a hyperspectral sensor on a UAV. Oh, right, so you can map the whole thing at once from the air. Yes, and you can look at the change in that distribution over time. So The UAVs can fly lower than bigger airplanes with a human crew on board, which means the sensor can pick up more detail. It needs all the detail it can get to deal with some of the challenges of studying plants in a very dry place. So it's really challenging to look at this kind of landscape because the vegetation is so sparse? Yes. Uh, okay. So things that we can do in forested areas, we're not so sure whether or not we can um, pick up the same signals um, with the same degree of accuracy. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of what we're testing um, in a bigger picture. It's taken a lot of teamwork to turn the UAVs into eyes in the sky for science. While Jessica's working on combining the hyperspectral information with LIDAR scans to get even more information about the vegetation on the INL site, the guys are looking for another place to test their UAV and hyperspectral sensor combo. From Idaho National Laboratory, I'm Sandra Chung. Thanks for listening.